Bananarama arrived in the studio manager's old golf. Just saw so many famous people there, and we were just like shocked at uh, the, the scale of the thing. Had no idea at all. It was just cameras clicking and films going, and dressed so appallingly, and I just looked horrendous. We looked scruffy, but we always looked scruffy. But we always put our faces on. <laughs> that was definitely our look. Yours was just particularly. Mine bad. was particularly poor that day. <laughs> <laughs> For good, in November 1984. Friend and legendary musician Bob Geldof made a momentous demand. And he called our manager and said, get the girls down. Probably used an expletive as well. <laughs> <laughs> get I the girls so. down to the studio. I'm making a record. It's a charity record. And that's all we knew. So it was a Sunday morning and we'd been out all night the night before. So we rocked up. And I saw Sting walking down the street and then I saw Bono and I saw Duran Duran. And it was like, wow, this is something pretty big. And big it was. Rubbing shoulders with the best in the business, Banana Rama joined the star-studded lineup known as Band-Aid. Recorded in a single day, their one-hit wonder, Do They Know It's Christmas, quickly hit the top of the charts raising more than $350 million for famine relief in Ethiopia. It's still one of Sarah and Karen's most memorable career moments, even if, on the day, they weren't all there. You look so young there, it's, it's amazing. So young, so hungover. Y you, <laughs> I was. <laughs> Terrible. Karen's there with a cup of I've tea and cigarette. I've got a cup cigarette. of tea and a cigarette. <laughs> with my hair just scraped back in a ponytail. I probably got the makeup on from the night before. Honestly, I... I mean, that is the difference I now. Know. We had no stylists or makeup artists. No, or... I cared. didn't really care at the time. Well, but looking cared. back, I just sort of think... Nobody I